I want to share with you two very, very important stories. The reason I use storytelling when teaching essentially any subject is this. Many years ago, one of my good friends, a mentor of mine, he told me, Greg, if you tell me the truth, I will believe you. If you tell me a fact, I will listen. However, if you share with me a story, then I will remember. And my goal is that you would remember what you learned tonight. Because this material, this information can very, very positively change your life. And so we begin. We go back to 2001, to a remarkable man who taught me about the Zone Diet. And it was none other than the founder of CrossFit, Coach Greg Glassman. Now, I'd been training for several months in CrossFit. And my mindset at the time was I had to win every single workout. My mindset was that my life depended on it. And the reason that was my mindset is I was serving as a deputy sheriff for the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office. And so my mindset was I have to win in the gym because I have to win on the street. And I was equating winning the workout with winning a fight for my life. And there were some workouts that I wasn't winning. And that really frustrated me. And so I went up to Coach Glassman and I said, Coach Glassman, what do I have to do differently in my physical preparation to win these workouts? And I was convinced that his answer would be some type of secret or additional training, physical training. Instead, he answered my question by asking a question. And he said, what are you eating? And at the time, the best I could answer was, well, I'm eating. And he said, what, when, how much, how often, what type? And I had no idea how to answer those questions. And so he educated me. And he told me that in order to succeed, both in the gym and on the street, I had to eat a very, very specific, precise way. And that method of eating, that methodology of eating, is what we refer to as the zone diet. And the first thing he did was he gave me a book called Enter the Zone. And he said, read this book. So I took it home and I went into it. And it's a lot of science. It's a dense book. And it was well over my head. I didn't have time. So I went back to coach and I said, coach, just tell me what to eat. Just like you write the workout on the board and I do it. If you tell me what to eat, I will do it. And he said, okay. And he told me what to eat. And what's funny is that my nutrition, the meals that I eat, haven't changed very much for the past 15 years. That's because I had a paradigm shift about the importance of food. And what I found is that just like the clean and jerk will never outdate us, neither will healthy sources of protein, carbohydrate, and fat. We need that for the rest of our life in precise amounts and at precise times. Now here's the amazing paradigm. This is how coach really changed my life. What he told me and the other athletes that were working out with him at six in the morning, referred to as Team Six, what he told us was if he wanted to create the world's ultimate athletes, what he would do is he would take us out of the gym, he would put us on an island for six months, and all we would do on this island would be to eat the right way. Six months just eating the right way. Vacation, a food vacation. We're just going to go to an island and relax and eat. That's how important the foundation was. And then after six months of good nutrition, he'd fly us back to Santa Cruz, we'd go back to CrossFit, and we would start to do what's called metabolic conditioning, Metcon. We would run, we would row, we would surf, we would paddle, we would jump rope. We'd get our body moving. And then he would add gymnastics to the equation. And by gymnastics, what Coach meant and still means is moving your body in space and time. So think about our programming in our gym. We spend a lot of time doing gymnastic movements, rope climbing, pull up, toes to bar, body weight squats, push ups. Those are all gymnastic movements. We have to control our body in space and time before we add an external object to it. And then we add weightlifting. Now, not only are we moving our body, we're moving an external object through space and time simultaneously. And then, sport. 
Now, at the time, this was back in 2001, 2002, this was pre-CrossFit Games. And so by sport, what coach meant literally was go out there in our beautiful community and learn and play new sports. Or in my case, as a law enforcement officer, it meant go out there and protect and serve. As a firefighter, it meant go out there and put out fires. As a paramedic, it meant go out there and save a life. So the idea is to use your fitness as an expression of the amazing body that God gave you. Then that paradigm came with a warning. And what Coach said is that if at any time you start to see what's known as retrograde performance, meaning that one month you've got 10 pull-ups and the next month you've got seven, it's a problem. And where you have to go with a lot of immediacy and urgency is back to the foundation of everything, which is nutrition. Everything rests and is built upon nutrition. Isn't that amazing? What a novel idea, what a paradigm shift, where all of a sudden our efforts in the gym, and we are working hard in this gym, and all the effort will be supported or unraveled by your food choices, by the food you eat. The quality and the quantity. It takes both. Well, that's a life-changing idea, and it very, very positively influenced and changed my life. Then, about four years later, I joined the Army. I'd been serving as a deputy sheriff, and I decided I wanted more. I wanted to serve in a new way. So I enlisted in the U.S. Army, and I went to boot camp. I went to Fort Sill, Oklahoma for boot camp. And I arrived at boot camp, and none other than a remarkable man, a true warrior named Staff Sergeant Oliver, arrives on scene to take charge of the 30 future soldiers that had arrived at Fort Sill. And I remember this guy. He was, in my mind, five feet tall and five feet wide. I mean, he was a monster of a man, amazing command presence. Those of you in the military, I'm sure you remember that senior drill instructor. And wow, what a command presence. And he told us, line up and prepare for inspection. So I stood there at inspection. And he walked up and down. And then he said some words that really, really influenced my life in a remarkable way. It had to do with mindset. And what he said is this. In my army, I want warriors. And warriors think a certain way. Now, when he said that, I started to really lean in and listen and pay attention because that sounded like something that Coach Glassman or my dad would have told me. That's, that's good advice. Warriors think a certain way. I like that. That resonated with me. And then he said this. In boot camp, your thoughts will become your words. Your words will become your actions. Your actions will become your habits. Your habits will become your character, and your character will determine your destiny. And I want warriors. Whoa! Amazing. I remember those words like it happened yesterday. Think about this now, my friends, because we're setting up the foundation of where we're going. What I realized between these two great mentors, Coach Greg Glassman, the founder of CrossFit, and my senior drill instructor, Staff Sergeant Oliver, is that there are two types of nutrition that fuel our life. One of them is the physical food that we eat. The other is the thoughts that we think and the words that we speak. Both of those form what I now call holistic nutrition. And we have to have both. Just like with the zone diet, how we have to have both quantity and quality. When it comes to holistic nutrition, we have to be eating the right foods and we have to be thinking and speaking the right way. And here's the reason why. What I learned from Coach Glassman is that our expression physically of our life rests upon physical nutrition, the foods we eat. And the expression of our life, our destiny, my friends, rests on our thoughts and our words. Wow. And so tonight, where we're going, and this is why it's the CrossFit Amundsen Nutrition Seminar 2.0, baby, 
is where we're going tonight is new territory. And not only are we going to talk about and educate and inspire you on the importance of the food that you eat, but we're going to spend just as much time educating and inspiring you on the thoughts that you think. You guys ready for that? All right. And so what we have to do is we have to start here. We're starting here with the physical nutrition. And what we have to do is we have to understand what food are we supposed to eat. So we're going to start with the food choices. And then we're going to talk about how we combine these food choices to make really, really very, very nutritious meals. Then we're going to talk about some of the rules that we have to abide by in our nutrition. So we begin. There's three categories of food. And every time we make a meal, we need to make sure that we have equal part of these three macronutrients in every single meal that we eat. So the ingredients that we're looking for, my friends, are protein, carb, and fat. Every single meal has to have protein, carbohydrate, and fat in it. Now right away I see some eyebrows like, fat? Not sugar. <laughs> so fat and sugar are not the same thing. Fat is going to be very, very important, especially when it comes to our performance. In the gym, we are thriving in a very anaerobic capacity. These are anaerobic workouts. Well, it turns out our body can draw from stored fat in the workouts that we're doing. Wow, what a novel idea that we can provide a specific nutrient that will support our efforts in the CrossFit workouts. Awesome. And so let's start with some of these ingredients and we're going to essentially define some of the food choices when it comes to protein. When it comes to protein. So here's one way to consider this. If it walks around, it's protein. Any vegetarians? Well, no, we have one. So we can, we can get creative when it comes to ensuring that we get protein choices. But for most of our athletes, if it walks around, we can eat it <laughs> and it's good for us, all right? So protein, what are some ideas of protein? Let's turn to you, our athletes in the gym. What are some ideas? What are some of the things that we can eat? What is protein? Steak, steak exactly. So if we're going with steak, ideally, we're gonna go with a leaner source of red meat. Flank steak is a great example of that. So a flank steak, absolutely. Red meat, excellent. Bacon's not as recommended. Bacon could be in that category. I love bacon. It's best to go with your protein choices with lean protein choices, leaner slices of meat. What about chicken? Absolutely. What about eggs? Absolutely. What about dairy? Cheese, cottage cheese? Absolutely. Those are all examples of protein. So let's write some of these down because soon we're going to draw from our list of protein and we're going to start to build a meal. So let's do this. We'll go with egg, one ounce chicken, and one fourth cup, we'll abbreviate, cottage cheese. Everyone okay with cottage cheese? Yeah, me too. I love cottage cheese. So the reason that I use this specific type of food is it just so happens where we're going very shortly is the zone and we're going to be very specific with the amount of protein that we allot ourselves. So it just so happens that one egg, one ounce of chicken and one fourth cup of cottage cheese is all what's known as one block of protein. And that's going to start to make sense here in a moment. It's going to be exciting where we're going with this. Next, let's go to carbohydrate. Carbohydrate. So here's a great reminder for the carbohydrate. If it grows in the ground, you have yourself a great source of carbohydrate. If it grows in the ground. In terms of shopping, in terms of going to the grocery store, New Leaf, Whole Foods Market, even a Safeway, if you are hanging out on the perimeter of the store, chances are that is where your best source of carbohydrate is going to live. Why would that be? What's on the perimeter of the store? Fresh produce. And what's on the aisles? Processed food. Yes, processed food. Things that have a shelf 
life. Thus the shelves. I mean, they literally can sit on that shelf for years, and you can still eat them. How's that going to go with your kale or your broccoli or your apples? They're perishable. They're meant to be eaten quickly. And that's the type of carbohydrate source that we are after. And so let's turn it back over to you. What are some examples of great, great carbohydrate? What do you guys think? Potatoes. Potatoes? Not a, not a bad source. I would go with sweet potato. Who said that? Yeah, I would go with a sweet potato. Sweet potato. Good. Very good, sir. What else? Spinach. Excellent. Love it. Kale, spinach. Very, very good. Broccoli. Apple. Who said apple? One of my favorites. Was that me? Did I say that? <laughs> Fuji apples, to be specific. Exactly. So let's put some of these things on the board because, again, in a moment, we are going to draw from our board to create a meal as a gym. So let's do this. We'll go one half Fuji apple. That's for Captain Corey. I think Mel. Let's go four cup broccoli, and we'll put S for steamed in there. And then, you know, I, who's a fan of kiwi? I'm on this kiwi. Is everyone okay with kiwi? I'm on a kiwi binge right now. I just love kiwi. So one kiwi. So again, it just so happens that these choices that I put on the board, these are all one block of carbohydrate. Next, fat. Fat. So fat needs to be ideally monosaturated fat. This is not sugar. This is not going over to the donut shop. What we're looking for with fat, ideally, is nuts and seeds and then oil. So olive oil is a great source of fat. Avocado, my goodness, great source of fat. Now, keep in mind that sometimes your protein source has fat in it. However, with the zone diet, we're going to go specifically to a fat source. So granted, there might be fat in your cottage cheese or in your steak, and that's great we're also going to go to a specific fat source. Here's some examples, and I'll break it down on the board, again, to match up with our protein and our carbohydrate. Almonds. So three almonds, three cashews, or one, we'll abbreviate, mac nut, one macadamia nut. So those are all examples of one block of protein. Now here's why I'm fat. Thank you. One block of fat. So here's why I'm emphasizing this block concept. One block of food. Now listen carefully. This is important. One block of food is one block from each of these three categories. So if I told you I want you to go home and have a one block snack, that would mean that you're taking one block of protein, one block of carbohydrate, and one block of fat, and you're putting that all onto your plate, and you're going to eat it and enjoy it, and you're going to thrive as a result of eating that way. And if I said go home and have a two block snack, what do you think you do with two blocks? Well, it's as simple as taking two from the first category, two from the second, two from the third. And so as opposed to one egg, now you have two. As opposed to half a Fuji apple, you have one whole Fuji apple. As opposed to three almonds, you have six almonds. And we would do the same thing if it was a three block or a four block meal. Now, here's the next part of this amazing equation. Each one of you is a specific block allotted athlete. So, for example, when I first started the zone diet, coach told me, hey, kid, you have to eat 22 blocks a day. Now, you can divide that up any way that you want to during the day, as long as it's no more than five blocks per meal. Now, since then, I've reduced the amount of total block that I eat during the day. But I always ensure that no more than five hours go by between meals and no more than five blocks per meal. Now, what I found is that most of us are we're visual and we're kinesthetic learners. And so as a gym, let's create a meal together abiding by the zone diet rules. One of the ways that we can do this is we can just assign people a block count. So generally speaking, most guys are going to be between 16 and 20 blocks a day. 
and most ladies are going to be between about 10 and 14 blocks a day. It takes approximately two weeks of eating in the zone diet to decide if you are in the correct ballpark for the amount of food that you need to eat. It takes approximately two weeks. It's a radical new way to eat, especially if people have been coming off a fairly high carbohydrate diet, which is kind of what most of our athletes are doing. We tend to be a little bit higher in the carbohydrate. So it takes about two weeks for your body to be like, wow, this is a new way of eating and I like it. And not only will you like it, your performance in the gym will immediately let the coaches and I know if you're abiding by this formula. It's gonna happen really quickly. Your performance is gonna skyrocket. It's awesome. And so let's do this. Let's create, as a gym right here and now, let's create, using the ingredients already on the board, a three block meal a three block meal. And we'll even make a little plate. So we're gonna put things right onto the plate. So here you are, you're in your kitchen and you've decided that you are hungry and it's time to make a meal. One of the tricks of being successful in the zone diet is to start with your protein. So start with your protein. So what protein source, and we'll keep it simple. We're gonna go with what's already on the whiteboard. What protein source do you want, Adrian? Okay, you got it. So three ounces of chicken. Is going on your plate and it just so happens that when we put those three ounces of chicken on your plate, it will take up about one third of your plate. That leaves us two thirds of the plate. So once we go with our protein, the next step is carbohydrate. What carbohydrate are we going to go with Tobias? Oh, we'll keep it simple. So we can just do, we can just do three kiwi, right? You can also mix and match. And so you could do two kiwi and one half a Fuji apple, and that works as well. Again, in terms of simplicity, when things are simple, we tend to do it more frequently. It's easy. It's meant to be easy. One of the tricks that I abided by, and I think one of the reasons why I've been able to maintain this diet for so long is I tend to stay one or two food choices per category. And so with carbohydrate, Toby, I'm like you. I'd gladly eat three kiwi, it's just so easy. Sometimes if we're trying to add four or five different food choices for one category, wow, now it gets a little bit tricky. So keep it simple, right? Keep it simple. So we're gonna go with three kiwi. And I bet, Toby, that if we took those three kiwi and we sliced them up, it might start to fill about two thirds of our plate. So in the two thirds section here, we're going three times kiwi. Now, last but not least, it's time to go to what could arguably be one of the most important categories, the fat. And I'll go to my friend, Nate. Nate, what do you want to see for fat, brother? Almonds. almonds. Okay, so we're going to go almonds. And how many? Six. Well, if we were doing six, that would be a two block meal. But we always have to align our fat with our protein and our carbohydrate. So we're doing three blocks of protein and carb. We need three blocks of fat. So we need nine almonds. Make sense, everybody? Nine almonds. All right. And it just so happens that those nine almonds might fit right into the middle of the plate. And that is going to complete what would be known as a three block meal. Simple as that. And it really is. And when I say simple as that, that's pretty simple. We have one food choice for protein. We have one food choice for carbohydrate. And we have one food choice for fat. That's pretty simple. Now, what do we need in our kitchen based on the fact that Adria said she wanted three ounces of chicken? What do we need in that case? Scale. Need a scale, right? We have to weigh our protein. That's kind of a bonkers concept, right? When's the last time you were in your kitchen with a food scale? Most of it has a scale in the bathroom, right? We weigh ourselves. Now I want you to weigh your food. Yes. And here's the reason why. How many of you did the workout today? All right. Joey, how much weight did you have on your bar for the workout today? Are you sure? How do you know? 
You write the labels. And what was your bar made up of? What did it look like? And those plates probably said 25 pounds. And you probably used a rogue 45 pound barbell. That makes 95 pounds. Who remembers their time from the workout today? What was your time, Toby? 820. 820. And did you use 95 pounds? Yep. Now, if I were to ask everybody what they ate today and how much and the interval between meals, who could answer it with as much accuracy as Joey and Toby just did? <laughs> Kevin could. Scott could. Yeah. That's where I want to go. And the reason that it matters in the gym what you lift and how fast you go is we record it. And because we're recording it, what are you able to do a month from now and six months from now and a year from now? Exactly. You're able to chart and notice your progress. And more importantly, you're also able to see, am I going the right direction? Are the indicators of my fitness continuing to go up? And if not, that's okay. You come to me, you come to one of the other great coaches in the gym, and we help you. But you've got data to substantiate what you're doing in the gym. It's the same thing with our nutrition. The reason we have to weigh and measure our food is we're gonna start to bring the same level of precision, accuracy, accountability. We're gonna bring that to our nutrition. However, <laughs> remember I said we wanna keep it simple? Check this out. Imagine that this idea of weighing and measuring your food is a little bit over the top for you. What you can also do is what's called the eyeball method. This also works at a restaurant. Because as much as I love the zone diet, you better believe when I go to Cafe Cruise, I don't roll in there with a food scale. All right? They're going to be like, get out of here. Crazy. So I eyeball it. So here's what you can do in terms of the eyeball method. As we were creating our plate, how much does the protein take up on your plate? Third. One third. And so when you're looking at your plate of food at a restaurant, you want your protein to take up on the plate approximately one third of the plate. How about your carbohydrate? Two thirds. Two -thirds. Essentially the remainder of the plate. And the reason that so much of your plate is dedicated to carbohydrate is what type of carbohydrate are we going to? Fruits and vegetables. Notice it's not pasta. It's not rice. It's not bread. It's fruits and vegetables. And we can have a lot of it. Two thirds of our plate, in fact. That's great news because you know what? These food choices, the broccoli, the kale, the spinach that you selected is really, really good for you. And so let's eat a lot of it. And then the fat. Fat is going to essentially tie everything together. It's not a lot. A little bit of fat goes a very, very long way. And that's kind of why I put it right in the middle of the plate. Just a little bit of fat to tie everything together. You can also use here, in terms of the eyeball method, you can literally use the approximation of your hands. And so for men, if you look at the palm of your hand, the palm of your hand, every meal that you eat, is approximately the amount of protein that you need on your plate. And what's incredible is the palm of your hand is about three to five ounces of that protein source. Next, two big handfuls of fruits and veggie. That's a lot. That's a lot. And then you can use the tips of your fingers. So the tips of your fingers for the fat if you're doing the eyeball method. And the eyeball method is great. Not quite the precision of weighing and measuring. Yet, it's also easier. So it might be a bit more sustainable. Keep in mind, however, it's no different than your experience in the gym. Those of you in the gym that are very, very precise, that check your journals and that realize, oh wow, last month I used 95, today I'll try using 100. You are experiencing in the gym amazing results. It will be the same with your nutrition. The exact same. All right, a few rules that we have to abide by with the zone diet. The first one is establishing how many total blocks 
you need during the day. So let's use an example of this. And then after the seminar, you can meet with me or any of our coaches and we can help make recommendations for how many total blocks you need during the day. But let's take, for example, the average male. So the average male is gonna be 18 blocks throughout the day total. And so what you do now is you take the total block amount that you need during the day and then you divide it between the number of meals that you're going to eat. One of the tricks of the zone diet is it will allow you to eat smaller meals more often. And that's my recommendation, is smaller meals more often throughout the day. However, let's say for example that this particular athlete only wanted to eat four times, four times a day. So what we have to do is we have to take 18 total blocks of food and divide it between four meals. Now, one of the meals is already created, right? We already have one meal, a three block meal. So how many more blocks does the athlete have to go? So they, 15, 15 more blocks during the day. So imagine that the athlete had this, that looks to me more like a lunch meal, doesn't it? Because of the chicken. So how about we make breakfast for this athlete? Let's make one more meal together. And why don't we make this meal a little bit more substantial? So the, this meal was three blocks. Why don't we try making a five block meal, a larger meal? Let's do it. So I'll go to Tyler. What do we always start with? Protein. protein. So Tyler, and again, we'll keep it simple. Let's stick with what's on the whiteboard. What do you want to go for your protein? Uh, Ah, okay, so we can combine it. I kind of like it, right? So he said three scrambled eggs with two ounces of chicken. And how do you come up with that allotment of food? Five. Five, and you went to your protein, and uh, every five. egg is one block, and every ounce of chicken is one block. So that's how we created that meal. So we're off to a good start. This is looking really good to me. So here we go. So this is meal number one. So now we're going to make meal number two. So here we have three eggs and we have two ounces of chicken. Outstanding. So how many blocks of protein are on our plate? Five. So what's the next step in terms of carbohydrate? How many blocks of carb do we need on our plate? Five. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Brett, what do you want, sir? Uh, we got to go some broccoli. So okay. Two, uh, broccoli in the morning? I like it. I like it. We're going, we're going green in the morning. I like it. Okay. So this could be a big meal. I like it. What are we going to do here, brother? Let's do four cups of broccoli. Okay. And then uh, one Fuji apple and two kiwis. Okay. So we're going to mix it up. So this, this meal is starting to get a little bit more creative than our first meal. And that's fine. That's the enjoyment of the zone diet. You can be a creator. So we have whoa, four cup broccoli and that's steamed. And then you also wanted to do one half Fuji apple. One whole, one whole uh, Fuji. One Fuji. And then two kiwi. And two kiwi. And do you see why it's going to take two thirds of your plate? That's a lot of food. That's a lot of food. But we got it. We're good. Next, we've got two out of the three ingredients. What do we need now? Fat. fat. I'll turn to my friend James. James, what do you want, sir? What's your fat source going to be? Okay, so every time we have three almonds, exactly. So we know that three almonds is one block, but we're making a five block meal. Five times three is 15. So we are gonna tie this beautiful meal together with 15 almonds. Simple as that. And so if the athlete had this meal, this five block meal for breakfast, and approximately three hours later, they had this meal, which is three blocks, we're at eight blocks. And how many more blocks do they have to eat during the day? 10. And so we could do it in a variety of ways. We could just make two more five block meals. You could make a series of two and then a three and then a two. I mean, there's a, an infinite number of ways to do this. As long as when you go to bed that night, that athlete has had a total of 18 blocks. And there you have it. That's the zone diet. And so the trick then is to consult with me or one of our other coaches and first determine how many total blocks you need during the day. That's step number one. Step number two is finding a sustainable way 
to maintain the diet. And here's what I mean by that. Many times, and we saw this during the 30-day challenge, we had some athletes come in during the 30-day challenge, and the first week they were doing five classes a day. It was incredible. What happened on week two? <laughs> we did not see them until the end of the challenge, right? You're better off maintaining a one class a day ratio for 30 days. Same thing with the zone diet. You want to find an effort that is sustainable for a lifetime. I've been doing this 15 years. How was I able to maintain that for 15 years? Well, I kept it simple. And if you find a strategy that keeps it simple for you, you're more likely to sustain the effort. And the longer you sustain the effort, the better. The better. Do you know what the word diet means? Do you know where that word comes from? The word diet comes from the Greek root that literally means way of life. Isn't that a great concept? And so, do you have a diet? Yes. You should have a diet. It's a way of life. This is a way of life. Awesome. All right, another rule of this type of nutrition is no more than five hours go by between meals. What does that mean about going to bed at night? Does that mean you only sleep five hours? Of course not. However, what that does mean is kind of a radical concept. That does mean that you might have a snack before you go to bed. You might have a one block snack. So before you go to bed, you might have half a Fuji apple, one ounce of cheese, and three almonds. A one block snack. And what does that mean about waking up in the morning? You need to eat when you wake up. And the reason I say that is that I've done some private consultations with our athletes and they've brought to me their food charts. And what I'm seeing is that a lot of our athletes are waking up in the morning having coffee and then two or three hours later having breakfast. You gotta wake up and we'll talk about what's called a morning practice and then you need to eat. You gotta eat because we're trying to keep that five hour rule in agreement, trying to abide by that rule. Last but certainly not least, what about hydration? We've got to be careful with hydration because in the zone diet, everything counts. And so if you're having smoothies and soda during the day, we're going to have a problem because that is going to go haywire on your nutrition. And so generally speaking, if you want to make smoothies, I am all for it. I make smoothies in the morning. I am all for it. Can you make a zone proportion smoothie? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it is delicious. Delicious. What we would do in that case is we would recommend that you use some type of protein powder. In terms of the specific amount of macronutrient that you're getting, this is important to understand, especially if you're going to be using protein powders in your nutrition. Seven grams nine grams and 1.5 grams equal each of your respective block counts. So seven grams of protein is a block. Nine grams of carbohydrate is a block and 1.5 grams of fat is a block. And so you can look at ingredients when you're going to the grocery store and you can know exactly how much food you are receiving in every single meal. That's important, especially if you're going to be going to a smoothie. You want to look at the amount of protein per scoop on that smoothie so you can equally match the protein in your blender with the carbohydrate you're putting in. What would be a good source of fat if you are making smoothies? You can, you can certainly grind up nuts. That, that can be challenging with a regular blender. It works great with if you have a juicer or... A Vitamix, wow, those are amazing. Oil. oil is a great choice. Oil, olive oil. One teaspoon of olive oil is one block of fat. And so you can simply measure in your fat. Avocado. Avocado is great in smoothies, absolutely. The idea is that if you're going to make a smoothie, make a smoothie. Just make it in zone proportions. Water. Water is 
absolutely vital. I just wrote an article in Caliber Press, a law enforcement fitness and health magazine, and I wrote about the importance of drinking adequate water. By adequate water, men, you need to be drinking, get this, about a gallon of water a day. And ladies, between one half and three fourths a gallon of water a day. That's a lot of water. You know your body is 60% water and your brain even more? It's vital. Water is absolutely vital. It's life sustaining. We have to be drinking enough water. Also, what's interesting about water and the way your body perceives thirst, sometimes, get this, your body thinks you're hungry when in fact you're dehydrated and you're thirsty. Isn't that amazing? You mistake thirst for hunger. And so you've got to be drinking enough water. Coffee is great. I'm a big fan. You guys see me at Coffee Topia all the time. I'm a big fan of coffee. If you drink coffee, that's awesome. Coffee, if it's black coffee, is neutral. Same with water, neutral. Doesn't count for or against your block count. But what happens if you take that coffee and you put in creamer and then you put in sugar or Splenda or some type of other Starbucks fuzzy, <laughs> slightly hippie addition. Now it counts towards your block count. So coffee's great, recommended black coffee. Water, vital, we gotta have it. All right, that's the big picture when it comes to nutrition. So that is what Coach Glassman taught me all those years ago. Let's talk about some additional resources and then we'll do Q&A. So additional resources. There are two that I recommend. One of them is by none other than the CrossFit creator himself, Coach Glassman. There's an article he wrote in the CrossFit Journal. It's CrossFit Journal article number 21. That is a free PDF download. You can just go on to Google, CrossFit Journal number 21, free download. And what he did is brilliant. He took the book, Enter the Zone, and he consolidated it into approximately eight pages. The reason that's a great article, I have that printed in my kitchen. The reason it's so great is that here on the board, we've kept it pretty simple. We've only got three choices for a protein, carbohydrate, and fat. In that article, you're going to have about 30 or 40 per category. And so when you go to the store, you literally know how to prepare, how to shop. And when you get that food home, when you're making your meals, you can go right to the chart and it will tell you, based on what you want to eat, how much of it you need. The other article is an article I wrote, and it's called Diet Secrets of the Tupperware Man. And this is important for our public safety, our firefighters. Because when I learned about the zone diet, I was also serving as a deputy sheriff. And so 50 hours of my week, I was in a patrol car. And I needed to maintain my nutrition even while I was working the street. And so I wrote an article for my friends that are also serving in public safety on some strategies to continue to maintain your health and wellness and nutrition while you're working a fairly demanding job like many of you are and questions. <laughs> questions. Joey. Can you set up your coffee as one of your meals if you put the right ingredients in there? You certainly could if you added protein to your coffee and carb and fat. You certainly could. Okay. Yeah, it's a great idea, novel idea. Yeah. Molly. Do you meal prep or do you go shopping like every two days, three days? Awesome question. So the question was for our online viewers, the question was, do I meal prep or do I shop every two or three days? I've tried the Costco version of this and going once a week to the store and prepping for a week. And what works better for me is every two or three days, I'm at Whole Foods or New Leaf. And I'm really going after the most fresh, healthy, alive food that I can. And that works for me. However, what I do is keep my meals very simple. And so when I go to the store, even though it's every two or three days, what do you think my shopping cart looks like? It's the same thing. I, I know about to the penny how much I need to bring in there with me because it's the same thing every single time. 
it's very, very sustainable that way. Great question. Richard. Can you eat more blocks after a workout? That's a great question. Eating more blocks after a workout. You have to eat after a workout. And so when you're done exercising, your body is primed for refueling. Specifically within half an hour, you need to refuel your body. You don't necessarily need more blocks. What you do need is food, a balanced meal. A balanced meal. Every meal should be balanced in the zone proportion. Now, I know a lot of athletes that you tell them, hey, I need you to eat after a workout. They would rather fight you tooth and nail than eat after a workout. That might be a good time for a smoothie. You'd be amazed. Like Sometimes you just can't stomach the idea of chewing something, but you can drink something. So that's a good time to come to the gym prepared with your smoothie ready to go. Corey. Absolutely, or that can all be pre-blended in your smoothie. So progenics, for example, you could go just the progenics protein powder, mix that up, drink it, you're good to go on your protein, then you'd have to go to your chart to make sure you also bounced it. Or just use that protein powder, blend everything together, so you literally walk into the gym with a container of your zone proportion meal ready to go. Either way. Nick. How, how much uh, does it mess up the entire diet if you're overall eating like this and then someone's like, let's go get a burger and you have the bun and that kind of stuff? You're ruined. <laughs> you are ruined. We're effective this <laughs> That's the same as going to the gym and bicep curling. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's a great question. It's like, hey, let's say, for example, that you are eating five times a day and four out of those five meals are really dialed in. And then you have an opportunity to go out and you want to go to Betty Burgers and have a burger with a bun. No problem. Like, life is meant to be enjoyed. And so by all means, enjoy life. The problem is if four out of your five meals <laughs> are out of balance. And that one meal, oh, this is my one meal of the day where I'm gonna, oh, that's gonna be a problem. So the, the, the closer we can get to ensuring that all the meals for the entire week are balanced the better. With, of course, the enjoyment of going out to the amazing restaurants that are in our community. Yeah, great question. All right, you guys have been awesome.